Hey everyone, Dayland with another random making encounter. If you are new to the channel, it is good to see you. If you are back, glutton for punishment, it's gonna be another 20 minutes of hearing me ramble on while we make stuff, but I think this is a good one. What is it? It's not really a book nook. It's too big for that. It's not really a diorama because it's in a box. Um, I don't really know what to call this thing, but I can tell you what it is. It is Star Wars, and it is Black Series 6-inch figures, Mandalorian meets Stormtrooper. Now, I always like to have a starting point, a thing that I find to build the project around. So in this case, I wanted to start with some of these action figures. I've been looking at some toy photography lately, love the stuff, and thought, hey, let's build a set for some toys, some action figures. Now, if you are a mint in the box toy collector, there might be some parts of this video that you want to just skip right past, especially the parts where I open the boxes. I'll make it quick, I'll make it painless, but those boxes are no longer mint. These are no longer in the box. And if you are a collector, you might want to just blaze right past those. If you are a toy photographer though, this might be the video for you. So without any more, let's just get started. So if you're one of those mint in the box people, this is where you probably want to close your eyes. I really did not do a great job opening up this Mandalorian box. There was a lot of tearing of cardboard I got better with the Stormtrooper, but really this was, was an ugly unboxing. The Black Series six inch figures are six inches. Um, that's a little redundant there, but these are really nice action figures, posable action figures. They've got a lot of range of motion, a lot of great detail. And the nice thing about them is that the height makes our math really easy if we're trying to figure out roughly how big things are, what the scale is. If they are six inches, we assume a figure is about six feet tall. That means one inch equals one foot in our world that we're creating. Stormtrooper detail is every bit or kind of a little bit more awesome than the Mandalorian, to be honest with you, simply because the armor is so clean. Kind of hard to go wrong with a Stormtrooper, and I really wish that I had these when I was a little kid. They are a little pricey, probably a little out of my childhood budget, but jumping into the build, I always start with cardboard. It's a good idea to start with disposable materials. These, you know, we all have a lot of scrap cardboard laying around usually from just boxes, packaging, shipments, prime, whatever that might be. And it's really nice to just mock up and glue up a rough, draft of what it is you're trying to build. So I started with the base to try and get a sense of how much depth and width I would need for my figures. The idea here was that the Stormtrooper was going to be hiding around the corner. I wanted to have a doorway or a portal of some sort to look in and around it and explore. And so I needed to start to figure out what the eye lines would look like. Cardboard's a great material to fabricate with because it does bend along the corrugations and it's, again, dirt cheap and it's readily available. This is where I kind of ended up. You can see there's a back alcove area where you can look through a doorway in the back and then there is a area for the Stormtrooper being played right now by our friend Boba Fett because the Stormtrooper hadn't arrived yet and a doorway to be able to kind of look through. Great reference sources are these Mandalorian series books. Uh, these are really outstanding and were just such a wealth of information. Once I was happy with the cardboard, I did then convert these over to vector files and throw them on the laser cutter to cut them out of eighth inch MDF. It's a bit of a luxury, definitely, to have a laser cutter, but this could be done with uh, other types of cutters. You could cut it on jigsaw with some MDF. You could use other sheet materials like eighth inch foam core, 
or things that are more readily cuttable than MDF, but it is definitely more precise. When I needed some thickness to the wall to build up sort of this depth, uh, thickness of the wall of the divider, I just built up layers of these little shapes, making some shorter to create holes. So you can see that there are some gaps that create holes where I'm going to mount lights and some control panels. Now the basic process is just all about layering different materials. So I've got some MDF eighth inch, I've got some heavyweight tag board that I used, some lighter weight tag board, I've got some 3D printed sort of nernies and greebles or greeblies depending on your pronunciation. And it's just a matter of building up little bits and, and bobs of detail. When I need to cut a lot of bar stock or a lot of square stock, I do use a Proxon chop saw. It's a little pricey, but it actually is a lot more precise and rugged than others you might find out there. In between, I'm doing some 3D printing. So we got this little mouse droid that's gonna be part of it. Turned out really nicely. And this is where we landed. This shows all of the different materials, some 3D printed elements, some things that were cut from uh, tag board and chipboard, other things that were from the three mil or eighth inch MDF. All of the files will be in the description below. I'll try and link as many resources as I can for you down there. It looks a little weird now, but once we move to paint, all of it's going to magically come together. Now, for the paint, it is really just craft paint. Nothing too spectacular. Different grays. These are $1.99, 99 cent bottles. And I've just airbrushed a layer of just gray, sort of this dark medium gray. You could hit this with a rattle can spray paint gray. In fact, I spray painted the exterior of the box. And it's really just a matter of giving it a basic flat coat. Depending on your Death Star or base that you're building, this could be lighter gray, could be white, it could be all sorts of different things. But I was kind of going for a little bit of a sort of grungy, darker gray, grubby sort of effect. Now here it is with just the first sort of base coat of gray. Again, I have a really inexpensive single action airbrush uh, to use, do this with, but you could use a spray can, you could hand paint it, um, but spraying will give you a better result simply because you won't have to fight brush strokes. You can see how painting it really brings it all together. So all of these different materials now suddenly look like they're the same kind of stuff. To give it a little bit of weathering, again, you know, Imperial stuff can be kind of either super pristine or, you know, maybe it's a little, in our days of the Mandalorian, a little rundown and a little grungy. So a little bit of dry brushing to give it a little bit of highlighting, to pick a little highlights, big flat brush, very, very minimal paint on it, cleaning it off on a paper towel, and then just kind of working from the high, highest areas down. So sort of brushing and dragging down areas where it might catch the light. Kind of end up with something like this. And then I start to pick out some of the little details in the control panels with just some metallic acrylic paint nothing too spectacular or fancy. Now, one of the episodes, the base episode in The Mandalorian, they went to attack a base that had a reactor that was in this lava pit kind of thing going on. And so this is really what that is supposed to be an homage to. So I created this scene in Unreal Engine actually, and printed it out. And you'll be able to see it as you look in and around the corner. Yes, paste is a great paste for gluing paper when you don't want to worry about buckling or curling. For the light boxes or the light panels, I created these little light boxes, basically. So with red LEDs and red uh, acetate to create those panels. And it actually worked out pretty well. The lighting turned out pretty even, which I was very happy with. In other areas, I used white LEDs and actually used the legs of the LEDs to provide some structure. You can see I'm using those as little legs. 
more LEDs on this one than I think I've had in any other project. And you can see these things that look like clear uh, line. That's actually some fiber optic for some of the smaller little pinpoint lights so that I had just a single LED illuminating up to a half a dozen little pinpoints of light. For the ceiling, I just, I just use really just chipboard. It doesn't need to be super structural. It doesn't even need to be super detailed. Most of this stuff was just to break up the flat surface and to hide the tips, the bulbs of the LEDs. And so nothing overly spectacular. Hopefully people aren't looking at the ceiling. Copper tape is actually one of my new favorite things to do wiring with and connect LEDs. I'll do a separate video on it because there are a couple little tips and tricks and some ways that you can do things where if you have to cross cross over things and you can insulate the layer below it and you got to solder sort of the joints. But the net is it's much, much easier and more compact than wiring for sure. And so I've really come to appreciate using it for low voltage, low current applications like LEDs. Now, once everything's fired up, there are a lot of LEDs on this project. And so it's important to actually make sure that you're not really pulling too much current. And the way to do that is to throw a multimeter in your circuit and test your current. So you can see I'm pulling about a half an amp here. I have a two amp transformer. I've got plenty of juice to, to run it. It's really not pulling a lot of amperage, so I don't have to worry too much about it. At this point, the only thing left was really to skin the box. That sort of sounds not pleasant, but you know what I mean. I gotta put some, some materials around the box. So some more eighth inch MDF, some additional uh, cut tag board, and then just spray painted it. Just hardware store gray, nothing spectacular, nothing special, just masking off the interior. To give it a little bit of relief, a little bit of detail, I just used a wash of some thin acrylic, some Liquitex ink, some acrylic ink, and just wiped it down. And after all of those shenanigans, here we have where everything landed. really hope you liked this project. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, all of those great things. And we will see you again real soon, hopefully, hopefully sooner than this video took to make with another random making encounter.